I didn't want to make this video. But honestly, the conversations I've seen about this topic in the last few days have revealed some fundamental misunderstandings in the community about how content creators or YouTubers are engaged by and engage with companies, about how marketing works and also how adults should behave. And as a little bit of a content creator myself, as well as an adult and someone with a legal background, it's kind of frustrating. But I get it. I forget sometimes that most people don't see a lot of the background stuff that goes on between content creators and businesses. Or they don't see those events from the perspective of someone who has thrown their everything, their blood, sweat and tears into their channels and are trying to make this a career. So let me do a Wizard of Oz here, throw back the curtain and pitch in on the latest drama in the community. Word Games Workshop right to kick Miniac out of the Horus Heresy launch event. So for those who don't know who Miniac is, and I mean, you're watching me and you don't know who Miniac is, which, okay, kind of weird, but sure, you do you. He is a huge YouTuber who produces a ton of content, which, gotta reveal a little bit of a bias here, I actually quite enjoy his content. Even if his level of painting is so much higher than my own that it sometimes makes me feel like a newt. And he was one of a number of top Warhammer content creators invited to cover the Horus Heresy launch event being put on by Games Workshop. But he was unceremoniously kicked out on the very first day of the event. He got a red card from the ref, and that is the one football reference that you're ever going to get on this channel. This happened because he accidentally leaked a Horus Heresy model early. What happened was he took a picture of a model that he didn't know that he wasn't meant to, and he posted that to his Instagram. Games Workshop then asked him to take that down, which he did, but unfortunately Instagram had auto posted that to Facebook, which importantly, he didn't realize. So the picture ended up staying up on Facebook without his knowledge. Then a few hours later, while he was having his scrum, as the Scots like to say, Games Workshop came to him and basically asked him to leave. And that was it. He, he had to leave. <laughs> it was over. He talked about this on his channel. He's done a video about that. There's a link in the description of this video to that. His video, by the way, was reviewed and approved by Games Workshop. This one is not. This one is raw. That's the last ever reference to wrestling on this channel as well. Now, before we get into the nitty gritties about who was in the right, who was in the wrong, and who's to blame, let's not bicker and argue about who killed who. I think it's, first of all, really important that we all understand the context of influencer marketing. Because that is the point of inviting someone like Miniac to your event. It's purely marketing and influencers are often invited to launch events like this one to document them and create content around them. And Games Workshop did interview a ton of the content creators at the Horse Heresy launch event. And they did this for their own content. They put it up on their YouTube channel and they put it up on their blogs. And really the ultimate reason why you would hire an influencer for an event like this is to get access to their audience. Games Workshop want to advertise Horus Heresy to the audience of those influencers. They want to leverage the brand of those influencers in their marketing. And that's basically what happened at this event. But that wasn't everything. Games Workshop did have an additional mandate for the content creators who went to this event. Specifically, they had to paint models. Miniac says that he had to paint a Primark model as well as an entire Horse Heresy starter box. And considering there's over 50 miniatures inside that box, two of which are pretty large vehicles, that's quite an ask. And this was a precondition. It wasn't an optional thing the content creators could do. And to be frank, it's significantly larger than a standard request of a content creator for an event like this. And in my opinion, it's actually pretty onerous. I recently went to an event for God Tier. This was put together by Steamforge Games and Hellstorm Mikey. And that was a big tournament playing God Tier. I had a ton of fun, met a bunch of other content creators. And this was ostensibly the same sort of thing. But I wasn't asked to paint all of my miniatures. 
In fact, I played at that event with unpainted miniatures, much to the annoyance of some other creators there, I will say. But I, I just didn't have the time. I'm really busy. I, I have a day job. I run the channel. There's a lot going on in my life, okay? I did win this, though. I did win this. This thing's pretty neat. You're my silver medal. Should have been gold. But the fact is, Games Workshop asked for models to be painted as a precondition of this event, and all of the content creators, as far as I'm aware, had to paint at least a little something something. Now, at least I do think that some of the creators at this event were paid to go, but I know that some of them at least weren't. And frankly, uh, that's not on a uh, pay your contractors Games Workshop, especially considering the fact that the cost of getting some of these models painted would run you into the thousands. If you actually, if you as a person, just a normal person, wanted Miniac to paint an army of space marines for you, it would be, uh, I don't even know what he could command in terms of a price point, but it would be thousands, like easily. It's a lot of money. So Games Workshop got a lot of free labor at this event, is my point. They're getting the physical miniatures, which are painted, worth a lot of money. The right to show those miniatures on their website, on their blogs, on their YouTube page, worth a lot of money. They're getting coverage of the event by content creators with inbuilt audiences, again, worth a lot of money. And the content creators are getting well, hopefully paid. Not all of them are though, so. And there is this discourse <laughs> that content creators should be happy for the exposure of being at this event. Like that is payment in some way. And it's not. Firstly, the exposure is of dubious quality. The videos filmed with these content creators hit around 15K to 20K in views on the Warhammer YouTube channel. Those are around the same numbers that I get, and I live with my parents. Most of the content creators featured in that video can pull in much larger numbers themselves. Secondly, if you want content creators to be able to produce great content on YouTube, then they need to be able to eat, and they need dependable income, and to have some level of financial security. And that involves being paid for their work. Influencer marketing is notoriously cheap, even if you pay for everyone involved. Think about it. If you come to me for a video on your miniature war game and you want to get it out there, you just pay me a single flat fee and I will work away. In a week's time, I'll have a video produced about your game and ready to go and then shipped out to an audience of thousands, many of which consist of your core demographic. That is incredible value for a company because the alternative is that they do it all themselves. They could hire a production crew, hire a presenter, get writers in or an ad agency, film an ad over a day or two, then send that to be edited to an editor, go, go, go. Then you finally have a video, but what do you do with that? Well, you can put it up on your YouTube channel and it'll probably get an audience of hundreds. And if it's really good, maybe a couple thousand, or you can put it on your website where no one will see it. Or get this, you could spend thousands on Google and Facebook ads in order to push that out generally. And ultimately, we'll probably not reach the majority of people that care about the content. Influencer marketing, like it makes sense. It makes sense why companies do this. I should, uh, I should charge a lot more. This is why, by the way, you see a Raid Shadow Legend integration on every other YouTube channel. Because the amount of exposure for the pay that they give, it, it's peanuts. So in a lot of ways, influencer marketing is cheaper, more efficient, more effective than traditional marketing. So this isn't a charity on Games Workshop's part, okay? They're not indulging content creators or doing them a favor. I've seen commenters talk about this, like content creators should be grateful for the invitation. And for content creators, yes, this is an opportunity. And yeah, it can be actually super validating to get an invitation from a company that maybe you're a fan of. But ultimately, this is an exchange. Both parties should be getting something out of this relationship. And importantly, it's a relationship that should be entered into with respect on both sides. Also, remember, it does cost creators money to produce this stuff, even if travel is paid for. There's a bunch of other expenses for content creators as well. You got lights, cameras, action. You've got an editor. I pay for an editor out of my own pocket. Hello, Glenn. 
<laughs> so creating content isn't free. There are costs involved on the content creator side, and those would have been incurred by Miniac, so I hope he got some payment at least. Travel being paid for, by the way, is not a substitute for payment either. Hotel rooms, flights, etc. may cost Games Workshop, but that's not payment for a content creator. Any job that requires you to travel will pay for your accommodation. I've worked a ton of different jobs. I once had to live in a little Scottish village for a month. That's where I learned the word scran. And the company who required me to live out there in that woman in black scenario paid for my bed and breakfast. Because of course they did. They're putting me out. I'm living in a haunted mansion going through the will of some dead person. It's unreasonable to expect me to pay for stuff in such a scenario. Okay, there might not have been a ghost. And from a content creator's perspective, there's also a level of this where it's an opportunity cost. Traveling to another country, taking days and days and days out of your own schedule, painting a ton of models. That's a lot of time spent. A lot of time spent not on creating content for your channel. That's a loss of income. And as a content creator on YouTube, that is genuinely the matrix by which I view everything now. Almost 24 seven, I'm asking myself, would this time be better spent working on a video? And usually I'm doom scrolling on Twitter, so the answer is yes, get to work on that script this course. But with all that said, that is all the context. We now come to the very main point, the point that keeps getting repeated again and again and again. This seems to be the overriding consensus that has emerged since Miniac posted his video. He broke the NDA by showing a model early, he signed a legal agreement, and if you break a legal agreement, if you break a contract, then baby it's time to pay the piper. Jesus, that woman in black day really affected me. Well, firstly, I, I don't know what the legal agreement looks like between Miniac and Games Workshop. But generally speaking, and this would be true for almost every single contract, it is a decision of the parties to that contract as to whether or not they will enforce the terms of that contract. Let me put it in a simpler way. Games Workshop had a choice of how to respond to the situation that was presented to them. It is a decision of Games Workshops as to whether or not they will or will not enforce any contractual terms that their partner is beholden to. So in their contracts, Games Workshop will have provisions written into it, specific terms, that gives them the power to enforce the terms of that contract or to seek a remedy in the courts. But to enact those terms and indeed to seek a remedy in the courts, i.e. take somebody to court, or even to terminate that contract is a choice. To be clear, Games Workshop are under no legal obligation to enforce the terms of their NDA. And this is what I would tell them if I were advising them in the capacity of a lawyer. Now some non-lawyers have said that it would set some sort of legal precedent, but that's not true. It absolutely would not hurt Games Workshop's future chances of enforcing future NDAs if they wanted to. Seriously, you think if Games Workshop didn't enforce this NDA that they have with Maniac, that it would actually hurt their chances in court at a later stage if they were to go after someone else? Of course it wouldn't. Why would it? If there was ever any litigation in the courts over an NDA in the future, that court would not look at past NDA indiscretions. They wouldn't care about that. They would be concerned with the facts of that case, of that specific instance. So to be clear, contracts give you the right to remedy. They don't usually mandate one. So Games Workshop didn't need to enforce their NDA and remove Miniac. They might have been in their right to do so, but they didn't need to. There was an alternative solution. And it's, it's really f***ing simple. <laughs> the moment that Games Workshop found out that the offending picture wasn't deleted on a specific platform, why not just go to Miniac, tell him, and ask him to delete the picture again? Why not assume that it was an accident? Why not assume good faith on his part? Wouldn't that have remedied the situation for both parties a little bit better? Games Workshop would have been able to keep their influencer, they would have been able to keep all that marketing, still would have had access to all that audience. 
And what happened, happened. Kicking Miniac out didn't resolve that in any way, not really. And from everything that I have seen, there seems to have been no consideration from Games Workshop about all the time and effort that Miniac put into his side of the contract and his relationship with Games Workshop. All those expenses we talked about earlier, all that opportunity cost to his channel, the travel time. He traveled from America to the UK, which is a long, stressful journey. He obviously cared about this event and he cared about being there and contributing to this. And seemingly, Games Workshop have treated him like he's some sort of offending party. As if he intentionally broke their agreement and sought to do damage to Games Workshop by revealing a Horus Heresy model a little bit early. But he has a huge platform, 324,000 subscribers on YouTube. His videos routinely get above 100,000 views. He doesn't need to leak models for clout. He's a huge integral part of the hobby community online. And he's brought products to market as well. I can't see into Miniac's brain. I haven't spoken to him about this, but I bet that he would have much preferred to maintain his professional reputation than intentionally leak pictures of a space marine. And Games Workshop know this. As mentioned before, they invited him to the event specifically because of the size of his audience. And look, in these sorts of situations, in my opinion, motives matter a lot. Personally, I like to take people on good faith unless they have consistently demonstrated that we should take them on bad faith. And to be honest, if Games Workshop treated me this way, I'd be really annoyed that they assumed that I was some sort of bad actor. It's such a disrespectful way to behave with someone that you are apparently working with. To simply assume the worst. Frankly, it doesn't speak to a very professional attitude from Games Workshop. I've seen people mention that Games Workshop could have done much worse. They could have brought him to court. And whether they actually could is, let's just say, very doubtful in my opinion. I really don't think that there was much loss on the side of Games Workshop, direct or indirect. And if there was, I think they'd have a very hard time proving that in a court of law. But that's also irrelevant to how I look at this scenario. Games Workshop could come into my bedroom in the middle of the night and chop my head off with a machete. I mean, certainly, they could afford a machete. And I've bought a lot of miniatures from them. I'm sure they've got my address squirreled somewhere away. So they could do it, but it wouldn't make it right. <laughs> it wouldn't make it appropriate. Even if a judge in a court of law agrees that, yeah, I've been acting like a little bitch. Discourse needs to go. It still wouldn't make it a reasonable action to take. And that's how I feel about these events that have occurred. Games Workshop, in my opinion, behaved very unreasonably. So why then? Why did they take this action? I've seen some suggest that Games Workshop were probably seeking to make an example of Miniac. You see, historically, Games Workshop have struggled, shall we say, to contain leaks. Many leaks, I personally suspect, are intentional. Seriously, you do not get that type of potato quality picture without adjusting a few settings on your phone. It's kind of like the UFO thing, they all started going away the moment that you got HD photographs. But some leaks are likely unintentional. But I also think that this was a decision that was made with no real eye to the future. And it displays a massively outdated attitude towards marketing. This genuinely could have come from a single guy in marketing or the product team who was like, I told you these influencers can't be trusted. That spell I named it. Ill and now they have gone really hard on a small mistake, leading really to a much worse result for content creators. Because if this results in an even tighter NDA that content creators will have to sign in order to work with Games Workshop in future, then that is one BDSM party that Discourse does not want to be party to. The first time I've ever said that. But also, this has hurt Games Workshop's reputation amongst content creators. Again, this is a relationship that Games Workshop have with the community. It's not one-sided. And this entire event is a stark example of Games Workshop's adversarial attitude towards their own community and with their own fans. And Games Workshop are not as independent of their community as they like to think they are. The 
The last five years has seen an explosion of Warhammer miniature wargaming content creators and content covering everything from battle reports to painting to opinion and critique. And this has undoubtedly led to tons of more people interested in miniature wargaming, including Warhammer. And that's not guaranteed. Games Workshop have a reputation now. It's one thing to act aloof and not really acknowledge the existence of content creators. It's quite another to treat them like ah. And look at the content section of Miniac's video covering this event. It's a veritable celebrities hall of fame of miniature wargaming content creators. You've got Midwinter Minis, Broadsword Wargaming, Sumikito Miniatures, Ninjon, Tabletop Alliance, Squidmar, Watch It Painted, Eric's Hobby Workshop, and tons more. Also Discourse! Look! Three upvotes! I'm relevant! Relevant! And they're all commenting, commiserating with Miniac, and importantly, calculating. As an example, I want to look at Squidmar's comment here, because I think he gives voice to something that a lot of other creators are thinking. This type of happening unfortunately scares me from wanting to go to a similar event in the future. Traveling halfway across the world to help a company to do promotion for them, like this was 90% for them, not you. To only make a small mistake, which honestly is very likely I would have done as well as I can't tell the difference between the different weapon loadouts and get booted from the entire program, for that is too much. And I agree with him, and I'm sure plenty of other creators do too. And it doesn't take a genius to recognize that most creators on the YouTube platform cover Games Workshop kind of reluctantly, because Games Workshop have alienated a lot of content creators in the community. Most content creators would prefer to cover a variety of games, but ultimately, if we want to make a living, we must create content for our audiences, for what people want to watch. But I have noticed a subtle shift. As someone who is kind of a little bit in the cold, content creators have started covering other games more, other miniatures, other models as much as they can. And this was Games Workshop's opportunity to extend a hand to content creators, to engage them as a valuable part of the hobby. And they blew it. This was an honest mistake made by a single content creator that was amplified massively by the actions of Games Workshop's bizarre and short-term decision-making. And that makes me personally think that it's very risky to work with them in future. That's honestly how I see it as a content creator. So sure, Miniac made a mistake and probably Games Workshop had the power to remove him from the event. But ultimately, I think for content creators, for consumers, and even for Games Workshop themselves, it was still a mistake to kick him out of the event. Whether they had the legal right to do so or not doesn't really matter. It was still wrong. So that's how they treat big content creators. You want to find out how they treat small content creators? Well, why not check out that time that I signed an NDA with them here? And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons, especially Steven Jackson, Earthwormia, and Sonic Bread. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye <laughs>